A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Let us be attentive. At that time, Jesus went to a town called Naim, and his disciples and a large crowd accompanied him. As he approached the gate of the town, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of a widowed mother. A considerable crowd of townsfolk were with her. The Lord was moved with pity upon seeing her and said to her, Do not cry. Then he stepped forward and touched the litter. At this the bearers halted. He said, Young man, I bid you get up. The dead man sat up and began to speak. Then Jesus gave him back to his mother. He received them all and they began to praise God. A great prophet has risen among us they said, and God has visited his people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Slava Jesus Christ. Beloved in Christ, I once said with a family who had lost their 18-year-old daughter in a car accident. One of the things I remember most is the mother sitting on his front steps, crying, sobbing, wailing, and mourning the loss of her daughter. It was few hours. There was nothing I could do. No words I could say to diminish her despair. I am certain that even today, almost ten years after that tragic event, she still feels the pain and sorrow of losing a child. One of the things that helped this woman and her husband was talking with other parents who had experienced similar losses. They were able to sympathize, cry, and pray with one another. This helped quite a bit. But there was something else that helped even more. It was the Church and faith in God. Today's Gospel says of a similar situation. There is a town called Nain, and a large crowd has gathered because a funeral is taking place. There has been the ultimately death of young men, and the whole town has come out to mourn and stand in solidarity with the boy's mother. And the grief is tangible. The crowd would have been crying out in anguish, as if the way with the Middle Eastern funerals, and there would have been perhaps hundreds of people crushed in close to the coffin, jostling the procession along with the sheer weight and energy of grief. And we are told that the boy who had died was the woman's only son. The anguish of a mother compounded with the reality that, with his death, the family name would come to an end, and her own future as a widow was now unsure. Where would she live? Who would care for her? This ultimately death had, quite literally, destroyed her world. There was only confusion and darkness and despair. Then Jesus approaches through the gate of the town and, seeing what is happening, is moved to act. He touches the beer, the coffin in which the boy is laid, and orders him to rise up. Immediately the dead boy is awakened and begins to speak and as we 
that Jesus gave him to his mother. How many mothers in Syria, how many mothers in war-torn parts of the world, how many of us today wish that Jesus would come into their town, our town, and give their son or daughter, husband or wife, mother or father, back to them. So the tragedies we see around the world, this passage from Luke and our own personal experiences, leave us with the inevitable question, where is Jesus when we need him? If he can raise the widow of Nain's son, why doesn't he sort out the refugee crisis? If he is so miraculous and all-powerful, why did he allow our loved ones to die? Why does he allow us to suffer ill health and mental anguish? I don't know. I really don't have an answer to that. The truth is that life can be terribly, terribly cruel and there are no easy answers. There is no sense, no rhyme, and no reason to so much of what we experience. And if someone says to you, it's all in God's plan, then that can make the pill of suffering even harder to swallow, can't it? There have been experiences in my life, and yours too, I'm sure, that I just don't want to believe have been part of God's plan for me. To believe that some of my grief and my suffering has been God's plan would suggest to me that God can be very cruel indeed. And I don't believe that for one minute. The truth is that our lives can be filled with inex inexplicable suffering and pain. Random events that happen for no real reason other than the fact that is how life is. But that doesn't necessarily point to a cruel and vindictive God. He is not a genie in the lamp who can magic away pain and suffering. Life is life. Tough things happen in life. That's just the way it is. And when we suffer, when we struggle with difficulties, it does us no good to get angry with God for not sorting it out. Because that's not the way life is. Instead, we would be better to direct our energies in trying to find God with us in our suffering rather than asking Him to wish our sufferings away. Because the truth of the Christian faith is that when we suffer, when we go through times of crisis, we are not alone, but God walks with us through our pain. And ultimately, that is what today's Gospel offers us, a glimpse into the truth that when we suffer the most, God is with us. Amen.